Hi, this is Tim. Well, I'm not on a hiring committee and I don't hand out job offers. I do talk to a lot of HR departments that are looking to hire technicians. And I talk to a lot of technicians who have just been through the hiring process. And I wanted to highlight 10 questions that I think really distinguish people or mainly their answers distinguish whether they have a lot of experience or they just read the textbook. Number one is describe the PLC scan cycle. And well, the very surface of this is, do you actually know anything about PLCs or do you just know the acronym is Programmable Logic Controller? And that probably does vet a lot of people out right here. But they're also looking for a little bit more than that. You know, they want to know that you do know those items, which if you don't know those items, uh, we do have courses on them. But chances are they're also listening for a little bit of tribal knowledge. You came in maybe saying you knew Alan Bradley PLCs or you knew Control Logics PLCs. Okay, maybe you know the basic scan cycle, but do you realize that, you know, the different types of tasks, the continuous tasks, the periodic tasks, the event tasks. So those are kind of a little bit of differences in that. Number two, and actually number two kind of built on number one in many cases is they'll ask you to build a latch circuit. And they're looking for a couple of things here. First of all, you know, and I will tell you that a lot of people doing the hiring, they don't actually understand, understand the scan cycle fully. So, uh, that could be part of the reason for this, but they're looking to see, you know, are you just using the latch, unlatch instruction? Do you understand the ceilings? Do you understand the differences in them? And, you know, kind of seeing this is a really basic circuit that probably you hopefully did in class fairly shortly on, but okay, do you, do you actually know how to even drag instructions? Do you know any of that? You know, one, one probably kind of going along with the scan cycle, probably the big one here is how familiar are you really with the software? I got news for you folks. If you're playing with Raspberry Pis, that's not going to get you a job. And, you know, I know a lot of schools right now, they're thinking that they can save money and do that. But that, those are, that's the latch circuit one is really, can you drag instructions down? Do you know how the address and works? Can you, you know, can you build a basic ROM? Number three is digital versus analog. Do you know the difference between a basic binary on, off, one, or zero signal an analog signal where you may maybe measure some measuring something in process control. Now, depending on the class you took, that this could be a very intimidating question. One thing I'll say is don't try to uh, squirm your way through it or anything. Be honest with them. If you only learn basic discrete, say, hey, we only learn basic discrete, but I'm very interested in learning. But really here, you know, you know, do, do you do you even know the things exist? Do you realize when you would use which one? You know, are, are you kind of familiar with PIDs? Kind of goes to you know what qualification of job are you supposed to be looking at here? But yeah, if, if you do need help with analog, we do have lessons of that on in our courses. Now, number four may be the most important one. By the way, these are not ranked in order of uh, of importance. Uh, they really are ranked in the order that I write them down. But do you understand the difference between syncing and sourcing? And more importantly, when troubleshooting, do you realize whether you should have positive power or negative power here? If you're going into a technician role, this, this arguably is the most important question when you come to our training class. While you don't realize it, this may, <laughs> people say I have a certain sayings I say all the time, the syncing and sourcing may be the one that subtly we repeat all week in different angles because, yeah, if we don't understand syncing and sourcing, if you're looking at that like you don't even know what those terms mean, then, yeah, uh, down in the description, you'll find a course uh, um, that will go through all this. And this this is a very important lesson. It's an important lesson if you just even need to wire up PLC input. This is an important lesson. When we go to grab a meter and we go to troubleshoot our PLC, this lets us know where to put the lead when we're troubleshooting. Now, number five, speaking of troubleshooting, is what is your troubleshooting method? What is your strategy when troubleshooting? And I will say that 98% of schools do not prepare you for this. And so this is one that I have a video down in the description or in that course series in the description that will help you. It's all about troubleshooting. It's really about the methodology of troubleshooting machines because 
almost all of you work this completely backwards. And so you definitely want to watch that video. Now, number six is coming on strong. I would have said even a decade ago, it wasn't that important, but explain to me what you know about networking. You know, used to networking on machine meant that you probably had an HMI on it. Maybe it connected to some plant network to grab some information, but everything is connected on the network. So do you understand that these Siemens devices, they're going to communicate over Profinet? These Alla Bradley devices, they're going to communicate over Ethernet IP. Do you understand what an IP address is? Or is your answer just, well, IT always takes care of that for us? That is not an acceptable answer today. And probably never has been an acceptable answer, but you need to know what an IP address is. You need to understand how the subnet defines whether we can communicate with things. Wouldn't hurt to know a little bit about gateways. Probably probably that's an up-and-coming topic more and more. But right now, understanding the IP, the subnet, and how devices communicate over Ethernet, IP, or ProbiNet, that's probably the big part of that. All right, we've been talking about some strong ones. Let's, let's talk about a couple of weak ones. What I see on the list, and I, I can't figure out, every time I see this one on the list, I'm like, why do y'all put that on there? But describe the difference between a timer on delay and a timer off delay. Yeah, I think this one gets copied out of um test. I'm not really sure. But there is, there is a difference between a timer on delay and a timer off delay, and we do have lessons on that. What I would say for hiring managers, especially in a technician role, what are you hoping to accomplish by... uh well, I'm not even saying technician roles. I would say programming roles. Really, hopefully, you're looking for much more in-depth uh, knowledge than whether they know if they, what the difference between a timer on delay and a timer off delay is. Number seven. Are we on number seven? We are not. We're on number eight. Number eight is describe how an HMI interacts with a system. And for the most part, this is a, a good question to know. I don't know that this one is a core knowledge. I think this is one that can be built out really quickly in a company's internal training. But do you understand how an HMI tag links to either a tag in the PLC or a data file address in the PLC? Going back to that network, and do you understand that the HMI has an IP address, the PLC has an IP address, and how they communicate together? You know, more, do you understand more than yeah? There's a pretty picture there, and somehow magically it changes stuff in the PLC. What programming languages do you know? And this this is one that I'm fairly I have a fairly strong opinion of that really uh, goes against a lot of uh, your traditional college instructor's opinion is with first what languages should you know number one language you've got to know is ladder logic now we're in that statement that I say ladder logic is the best language but it's the language that you're going to run into ninety eight percent of the time maybe the other two languages are better but you're only going to run into them two percent of the time so. You need to be fluent in ladder logic if you are looking to get a job as a PLC technician or a PLC programmer. Now, the other languages are function block diagram and structured text. Those are the two other major languages that almost all PLCs do support. And you should you should know some about them. And we do have a Rosetta Stone exercise where we kind of, you know, relate the three languages together. But uh some people are saying that you shouldn't learn ladder logic now. And here is just my core argument. If you walk into a place that is 98% ladder logic and you say you are the world's best function block programmer, you're only helping them in 2% of their situation. And finally, explain to me what lockout tagout is or LTO2. Loto, I, you know, I, don't even know I guess people do say Loto, I always say lockout tagout. And the, 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 first of all, lockout tagout is an incredibly important thing. Now, hopefully, even if you say yes and you can explain everything, there is a lockout, lockout tagout. I hope that company is still putting you through lockout tagout training. They should. But this is kind of one of those questions of understanding your core foundational knowledge. In other words, did you just go to school and take a PLC programming class and maybe take some basic electricity class? Or have you at least been immersed in some um, culture of safety, we'll say? And so there are, you know, even if you've been to college, you've graduated and you're trying to get a job, there there are some um, short classes usually put on. Maybe OSHA has a class in your area. 
or some local company to be well worth the time to go through a basic electrical safety class or a basic, actually a basic OSHA safety class. I, my son did the OSHA 10 class and he came back, you know, just probably rambling off almost, I won't say everything you need to know, but a good amount of what you should know. So that would be a good thing to know there. But what questions do you see on test that, uh, that I missed? Let me know down in the comments.